Hello, good evening. Assalamu alaikum. Hola. Welcome back again to the Game Changers series of CHPA. Uh, this is the third series of CHPA live war which we'll be doing. And uh, today we'll be discussing a very critical and crucial part of the HR analytics that is structured problem solving, critical but neglected. And uh, to uh, as usual for uh, to moderate and uh, at the speaker panel we have got a steam speaker panel from all across the world we have got engineering bashir engineering bashir you all know he is very well known face in hr analytics domain and uh, he is working as an advisor to the various portfolios government portfolios in saudi arabia and uh, he takes initiatives uh, and resolves the and provides a solution through a structured problem solving and he is regarded as a guru in analytics uh, in Saudi Arabia. And now we have got with us Rajeshri Chartered of CRPD, she is the chair director and you have heard her last time um, and she is going to again, uh, she will take part in today's discussion on structured problem solving and you have, we have Abhijit the course director of CHPA, Certified HR Strategy and Planning Analytics Certification, which is creating wave all across the world. And uh, today's discussion is focused on the module two of CHPA. And uh, Abhijit will also give some uh, glimpse about how uh, effective this module is in delivering the business focused solutions. So with this, I welcome all the panelists today uh, for a discussion on a live wire brought to you by Boston International Institute of Certification and Assessments, Dubai, UA. Abhijit, now what if problem solving is unstructured? I think who better to uh, answer this uh, than Engineer Vashif, who who has been in the midst of problem solving uh, throughout his life. And it is interesting to understand that what if problem solving is missing the structure it requires in Javashid. Okay. Thank you very much, Abhajit, for that. In our life, problem solving has to be with us from cradle to grave. But let's talk about what is uh, problem solving. How do you define problem solving? The definition of problem solving, it's a systematic approach to defining the problem and creating a vast number of possible solutions without judging these solutions individually, rather through a systematic way, whether or not they work or they don't. In other words, problem solving is a cognitive process where we direct uh, or it is direct at achieving a goal where no solution method is obvious to problem solver. Too complicated, but this is the reality of it. In other words, what we need to do is figure out exactly what is the problem by defining that problem. What do we need to know in order to compartmentalize that problem and understand its frame of reference or its borders or its uh, you know, contingency and, and where is it within our own structure. Then we have to structure that problem. In other words, we think of a, a disaggregated and uh, early hypothesis of what could be the key elements of this problem and work our way from there to prioritizing the issue developing issue analysis and uh, analysis plan if need be, conduct an analysis, synthesize the finding and understand them, develop a recommendation on how to solve that problem. In this way, you have a very well structured approach into capturing that problem, dissecting that problem, understanding how the problem works, thereby understanding how that problem can be mitigated or contained or even eliminated. Some problems you have to live with, you can't change them, but you can live with them. Some problems you can contain their damage and it's understood 
that this is the limitation of the problem and this is your mitigation pro uh, mitigation plan for the results of that problem or you can remove the problem altogether. This is called the McKenzie seven steps of problem identification and resolution or uh, you know fixing that problem or to understand it better well. Now that we have defined the problem, we go into the next process of that problem definition, which is starting to structure that problem and dissecting it. What do you think about it? I completely agree with you, uh, Injera Bashid. Uh, this is this is the the core of problem solving, uh, and one of the key necessities of a structured problem solving is that we get an idea whether we are trying to solve a core problem or we are trying to address the symptoms, which is not the problem itself. You can understand that uh, one year back when I have a fever of 103, uh, my core problem was uh, fever. Now today, if I have a fever of 103, the core problem might be corona, not the fever itself. So it is very, very important that as the doctor does, that you structure the issues in a manner that you can differentiate the symptoms from the core issue. The second uh, benefit that it brings in is that we might be addressing an issue which accounts for only 20% of the total problem. So we have to prioritize what we are addressing because the time is precious, the money is precious. So th this is one of the one of the key uh, elements uh, that we are trying to address. Uh, Sandeep, if you can get the slide back, uh, because yeah. Uh, uh, so one of the issues, issues that we saw is symptoms versus root cause. Uh, Rajesh would be able to uh, chip in more on uh, how how complete is the is the issue tree that we are uh, we are trying to build. I, I, yeah. Sure, Bishri. Uh, thank you, Sandeep. Can we have that slide, please? Right. So. As addressed by Abhijit and by Engineer Bashir, first, when you define a problem and when you start structure, uh, start drafting the structure as to how do we solve that problem, we have to really understand of what do we mean by the structured problem solving. And uh, when, we, when we start defining what exactly are we trying to hint at when we are trying to structure the problem solving is definitely comes through uh, you know, being cognizant of certain facts while implementing uh, these structures during your business analytics, uh, you know, solutioning, while, while you're designing a solutioning methodology altogether. So ensuring completeness in analytics, which is, uh, you know, you're, you're ensuring that all the matrix, all the matrix that you hold on your, uh, structure involves 360 degree parameters, which are when you define all the matrix, all the parameters, all the variances which are involved into the um, into the definition of structuring the problem solution. It's extremely, extremely critical to have a 360 degree approach and a completeness. So this is when we are trying to uh design of how do we and what do we need to know when we are trying to design a problem solutioning effectively in the business and while using business analytics so yes abhijit abhijit uh, abhijit uh, you have in your module very well defined uh, you know uh, methodologies and uh, the uh, the approach to the structured problem solving can you please give little you know insight from those modules so as the, uh, module two? stated by engineer Bashir in the beginning that uh, we are following uh, McKinsey's seventh step of problem solving uh, which is a well recognized well accepted problem solving uh, technique across the world now, within that, uh, the first step, as mentioned, was defining the problem itself. So if you understand the problem, is the first thing before we even start thinking about a solution. 
the second thing is to break the problem statement into various issues now this can be done in various formats what we are doing is uh, helping ourselves with some issue trees uh, the other other formats can be you can do a brainstorming session you can do a fishbone analysis uh, there are multiple method methodologies uh, but for for the for the convenience of the participants we stick to various kinds of issue tree uh, analysis because uh, issue trees can be drawn both from a point of view of business drivers as well as point of view of the issues that we are we are trying to address so that helps us but then uh, in the course we leave it open that this is one of the methods we have discussed there are other methods also depending on one's comfort level because you can understand something that we are not dealing with people who are just fresh out of the college people have experience of 15 20 years uh, and mentally everybody is doing a problem solving it is not that nobody is doing it we are putting a structure into it we are focusing on documentation uh, because that helps us not leaving any stones unturned i will give you a very simple example when my electricity bill comes very very high regularly then the first things we start doubting is the usage of my appliances whereas one of the possibilities can also be that the meter is not working properly so have we have we addressed all possibilities is what good problem solving is all about and that's where if you go back to the slide the third one uh, that we see so just go to the previous slide so if you see the detailing in business drivers and key performance indicators so one we are segregating symptoms from root cause the second we are ensuring that it is all options are mutually exhaustive and uh, mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive and the third is how detailed are we in defining business drivers and the definitions if we are doing these three then most of Uh, so certainly the prop the structuring of the problem is done and when you have done the structuring of the problem definitely the solutions are easier to find and uh, abhijit uh, yeah. so since this uh, certification is all about hr strategy and analytics yeah. so i'm sure uh, the attendees will get hands on hmm. with the doctors and the approach and so that and it is based on which you said very rightly that uh, and you told me that this is based on the live cases where the people you know they dissect uh, you know it's like open heart surgery where they do that uh, you know the live cases and then you provide them the solution you know to the organization so the structuring in the problem uh, is definitely to do with methodology but it is also to do with habit so uh, it is more important to get us into a habit and that is the reason almost every session that we uh, do there is some part of structuring a problem even if i am doing a small case study we always try to put a put an issue tree around it and then approach the problem so that by the end of 12 weeks it is not the theory that we are harping upon it is select your theory but start practicing and it is not just about uh, hr strategy it is a part of life if when i when i get up uh, i have a problem with weight issues i will do my structuring of the problem that where is the problem lying is it is it sleep is it food is it a uh, uh, routine and then you start addressing the problem so it's a habit that we are trying to inculcate uh, right even with the senior people we get into bad habits over long periods of time we have worked so you start breaking them all right so you know that brings us to the you know the next topic about that with experience in my kitty many people think that uh, problem solving is not necessary so that's a cliche you know and uh, uh, let's let's hear the thought and views from the esteemed panelist so i'll just uh, introduce why uh... told you see uh, mentally we are all structuring our problems till the problems were limited in size the need for putting it down on pen and paper was not necessary now it is often said 
that my experience is a replacement for a problem solving exercise and and i don't disagree because experience comes with solving a lot of business problems over the years but i would definitely like engineer bashir and uh, rashtri to uh, you know share their experiences about how the complexity of the problem itself is increasing and what is the necessary for putting it down on paper you know uh, is it is it that structuring is helped by experience or experience that's helped by structuring both points of view yes sir uh, the first question i want to ask you in response to that which came first the chicken or the egg and when you're working with problem solving how do you structure the problems the more you understand and draw them out the more experience you get the more you understand about what the problems you are drawing out you need without a doubt and this is nothing to do with your age or your field or your experience it has to do with how problems happen and how we see problems me and you can see the same exact problem but i see it from a point of view of socio economics you could see it from a point of view of academics some people see it from the view of policies procedures equipment uh, environment you need to understand the different components of uh, problem contributors so when you get a problem with experience this will become more intuitive rather than cumbersome but you're going to still do the same thing all the time you sit down you start structuring the problem and saying okay what could be leading to this problem is it a policy is it a procedure is it a, a person or a group of people is it uh, an equipment issue is it an environment issue it may be out of those five or six i just mentioned it may be three contributors three main uh, contributors and two minor or you know superficial contributors but at the end of the day you need to define what that problem is on one second you need to see which is your biggest chunk of contributors so you can have a problem once you draw it out and you start seeing those issues you will find out that people and policies are part of that problem or causing that problem however the people contribution to this problem is about 10 15% while the policy contribution to that problem is more than 60% or 50% whatever then you have to focus your solving skills on to figuring out why is the policy causing the problem fix that and most likely people will follow so you don't have to fix the people problem because the policy fixed the people problem and i'm giving just an arbitrary example here what do you think uh, dr rajeshri i i am in complete sync with uh, with your example and your explanation uh, engineer bashir and i couldn't agree enough because um last year and this year we also did uh, one of the major leading exercises called as zero based analysis um for zero based organization restructuring all together and the first very foremost question that the board and the ceo uh, along with all the uh, c level membership would ask was what is the problem area that we are trying to address before we jumping on to the analytical mode and until and unless we were aware of our what and only then we could structure our why and then the how you know these three questions are so important and critical while we are designing and trying to find a solution to our problems within the organization to begin with a simple example um, was employee engagement a very very critical um, component that had to be derived uh, given the current scenarios where uh, most of the organization including ours have gone through a lot of um, restructuring uh, you know staff contingency plans many employees have been put on bench for a lot of 
uh, period so far so the question arises how do you manage their uh, motivation levels how do you keep up with their um, morale to remain productive in the company uh, and give you the results on uh, day to day average sales revenue generation and human resources really play a very critical role to answer the how for the business leaders in the organization now a problem has been identified now we need to break the problem and and have a structure defined as how we are going to dissect this problem deep dive into the answers of number 1 why number 2 how and number 3 when so it is very very critical when you are getting into the or before you initiate any sort of analytical exercise to define your problem have it structured and then deep down to you know further breaking it down in different levels and this is exactly what we try to address and you rightly mentioned you know uh, was it the chicken or was it the hen or how was it uh, from where did it all begin so yes business decision makers have to take decisions because they are answerable to stakeholders to shareholders and after that decision has been taken is when you start measuring the impact of that decision and when then you start measuring the impact you start identifying number of cries number of uh, you know areas of problems within any function uh, of an organization and that's exactly where human resources play a very critical role and courses and programs like uh, like chpa is extremely critical because it gives you um, a sense of approach to inculcate within yourself to start start thinking and developing the habit of structured manner and approach altogether so yeah uh abhi uh, abhi ji uh, now we are entering the domain of module 2 you know of the course and uh, forget about uh, chicken and the egg i'm talking about the entire livestock here so the problem is the moment you know uh, people go to the module 2 they start exasperating you know oh i cannot do this course is becoming too tough for me you know uh, structured unstructured data how do i sit down you know they start having those imaginations you know and then hr analytics they, they you know the fierce the psychosis starts gripping them and they say no 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 this is not been you know, i cannot take it but i know you have made this course and designed it in a in a in a so nice manner Uh, so just take us that you know how do we remove this fear psychosis uh, for this you know the data analytics for this you know the second module which is you know problem solving you know the the basis of the entire existence of this module is because of this problem solving so just tell us about how this we have made this module you know more lucid easier and effective and you know we can remove the fear psychosis from the mind of the people yeah Uh, I, i would say it's on the contrary uh, uh, sandeep so whenever uh, i start the course on problem solving the first reaction is what is new that i am going to learn uh, and and the biggest problem is that when we are dealing with people who have more than 15 years of experience a kind of inertia to change sets in so you realize that there are three words structured problem solving over the years what we get habituated is structured solution the problem goes out so whenever we introduce a problem even in the courses that we are doing the batches that we are doing you give a problem and 90% of the responses are about structuring the solution so if you say that you know we are trying to analyze uh, attrition the first thing that comes to everybody's mind is okay uh, uh, these are the possible reasons why they uh, uh, exit any day so we will form a committee where they will sit with the people and this process of solutioning starts uh, coming in because they have seen so much of attrition over the years what we don't realize is that things change very fast and last year we were trying to analyze attrition uh, and as usual we were trying to figure out what to do and somebody pointed out that 
you know, a good figure is that out of the total 100% attrition, 40% were actually initiated by the organization. So when we start discussing, it, it, it actually came out, the problem is not attrition, it is the, it is the recruitment that is the problem. So if 40% of the recruits are leaving us or we are asking them to leave within a certain span of time, so either the performance is the problem or the recruitment. So if you analyze the data, it, before solutioning, are we structuring the problem itself? That is the, that is the key thing that we, we start with. Once you have structured, then numbers become very easy. If numbers were scary, you will not count your salary. So numbers are very friendly thing. You get your, get your salary, you count them twice. The only problem is when there is too much of numbers, then you need structuring before getting into the numbers. That's the only thing. In your machine, uh, laughing at it, he has something to say. In your machine. Your machine. I, I can't agree more with Abhajit about this. Uh, it, it becomes, uh, as Abhaji just said, uh, you're looking at the attrition while the, the real issue was hiring in the first place. You look at uh, the numbers and you think the numbers are inflating or deflating because of uh, one or another element. And when you analyze, you figure out it has nothing to do with all of that it has something to do with, for example, your way of marketing or your sales or uh, how you're uh, branding your products or whatnot. That's why when you look at a problem, structuring the cause of the problem will cut down on the time you need to solve the problem, will save you a lot of money in investing somewhere else where it's not needed or it's not your biggest chunk or it, it's not actually where your problem is. I cannot emphasize enough, when you're looking at a problem, you need to understand the root cause of it. A lot of times, we, as Abhajit said, we misinterpret symptoms for cause. And we try to treat the symptoms when the cause is already there and it's not moving and it can even grow bigger. Having something... Uh, you know, a small problem and letting a small problem go as just a small problem. Little by little, that small problem will turn into a catastrophe where you could have paid peanuts to solve that little problem and contain it. Uh, but now you're going to have to pay millions or billions in order or even lose your entire business because of accumulated issue with something you missed. It is very important to try as much as possible to catch all elements of that problem, all causes, sub-causes, everything possible. That's why we do a brainstorming. That's why you do an, an analysis tree. That's why you do a cause, uh, cause and effect. Uh, there, there are many, many, many ways to analyze a problem. The, the key issue here is analyze the problem. A lot of times in business, in structures, uh, anywhere, you immediately go and see the obvious and try to solve for the obvious. The obvious may not be the true cause of your problem. Many, many times, it could be something completely different. Understanding how to analyze the problem, compartmentalize it, dissect it, use feedback, Try to imagine as much possibilities as possible about why the problem is happening and how to handle it is just absolutely the only way around saving yourself and saving your face, basically speaking. So that's what, you know, it, the famous saying goes by that a uh, stitch on, on ta in time saves nine. You know, if you if you can pick up on the, at the right moment at the right time, the problem, you know, you can save a couple of millions of dollars, uh, which could have been, you know, saved otherwise. So that brings us to our next uh, topic, Abhijit, structured problem solving and business analysis.
so this is one of the key uh, questions that that we are trying to uh, address during the during the course uh, that CHP is that what is the relevance of structured problem solving in business analysis? Uh, Sadiq, you can understand that business today is very different from what use it used to be a long time back. So earlier, if you remember, uh, we used to get into the office and sign a register and go back. So the HR knew that who is present and who is not present. They never used to come uh, keep a track on how many times I've taken a cigarette break or a tea break. Now, you have not only the timings for uh, entering the office and exiting the office, you also can track how many times you have entered and exited, when you have entered and exited. Uh, and I can also track with whom you have entered and exited. So there is so much of data available that if you are not structured, it will be extremely difficult for you to understand what value you derive from the data. And I've, I've heard this multiple times that, you know, you are into analytics. I have a lot of data. Can you bring something out of it? And my response is very simple. If you don't have a problem, just ignore the data and go ahead. If you have a problem, then we can see if the data helps or not. The second is the nature of the business problem itself is changing a lot. And I would like uh, NGO Bashir and uh, uh, Rajshri to talk more about what kind of problems they face today. And that needs uh, structuring. The third is you are not the only one solving the problems and implementing the solutions. There are multiple people involved. If you are not structuring your thoughts, if you are not putting down in paper, then you might be running very, very fast, but your team will not be able to catch up with you. At the end of the day, we are not looking for your brilliance or intelligence. What we are looking for is a solution conceived and implemented on ground. These are the key things. And I would invite uh, Rajeshri and Anjir Bashi to discuss more about you know, whether I have missed anything and what have you experienced in terms of complexity of business problems or the data. So, um... Just off the bat, immediately, when you don't have, um, when, when I receive the data for uh, the, the consultations I work with, usually there are always uh, hidden issues, mislabeling, a lot of things that I need to start uh, solving for before I even start solving the problem itself. So I need to make sure that the categories are right, the, the numbers don't have a lot of anomalies in them or outliers. Uh, having all of these structures in my head did not just come by you know, way of you know, a magic wand. I've received data where I immediately started analyzing and drawing conclusion and then figuring out that there was a mislabel somewhere, there's plenty of outliers. Uh, Something was labeled as kilometer, but it was in miles. Something was uh, labeled as in kilogram, but it is actually in, in pounds. The difference in the answers are massive and could cause to a lot of uh, losses in time and in money. Structuring, uh, what this course tells you is whenever you receive data, the first thing you do is you analyze what this data is and you figure out where this data serves you, how would it serves you? Is it valid or invalid? Can it be of potential or not? Understanding all of those um, attributes to your data will help you actually reach your solution better and provide a better consultation and a better resolution to the problem, whether be it sales, be it attrition, be it hiring. Uh, a lot of times we took, um, one example where we're talking about an entity that is hiring and they're again having a problem with attrition. Uh, the problem came down to that the agency we're using or was being used in the example was targeting the wrong people for the wrong business. It's like hiring a business uh, professional for a nursing job or hiring a nursing job for a clerical job. It's It can come down to that 
simple fact, and it can come down to, I'm sorry, your your uh, matching uh, incompatible uh, qualifications for a specific function. Analyzing all of that, understanding all of that, uh, understanding what the business is looking for to start with before you even start looking at the problem. What is the business looking at and why is the problem there? And then go from there all the way down into solving that particular problem. What do you think, uh, Dr. Pragati? That's fine. She's an excellent um, participant as well. Uh, okay. Engineer Bashir, I completely agree um, on the points that you laid down. Um, and to add on further, uh, well, a couple of examples that I've experienced myself while um, getting into the structured mode uh, of problems and data uh, and implementation altogether has been uh, while designing employee value proposition standards in one of the top uh, semi-government organizations in, in UAE. Now, um, you know, it it comes down to number one expectation. So what is the objective uh, of the management that is laid or put across like a vision statement uh, for human resources function to carry it? Now, um, an, an ex organization wants to be the best employer or the best employer of choice for people to work with. That's one. Uh, consider diversity inclusion, having multiple nationality on board uh, becomes the second most um, you know chosen criteria by the board and between all of this you also have to be the most um, uh, attractive employer and hence you should have the best employee value proposition statement at hand while you are attracting the best talent across uh, different countries and the best companies to state uh, the very, very uh, well-focused example, I would say you always have a very set and standard uh, grading and comp and bend structure in any of the uh, top organizations that you work with. And then you realize when you start looking at why are you not able to attract the right talent? Why are you not able to uh, retain the right talent in your organization? And you, you have the right data which is present with you. And uh, you then have to start you know, structurizing yourself as to what exactly is your problem area when, you, when you're trying to understand between both attraction of talent and retaining the top talent. And then you understand and break your problem further to only realize that only if you had the um, required compensation and benefit structure provided to these people. Example is, uh, if you're hiring uh, somebody who's single and you're offering benefits like child education, um, uh, you know, spouse benefits of air tickets, etc., which is very common in uh, Middle East setup for employees to work with, and it really doesn't attract them. It it doesn't mean anything to them because the end question is I'm single and what do I do with all of these benefits? Good that you have a provision for all of these benefits, but it makes no sense for me. So that's when exactly you start understanding where your problem area is and try to mold and design your solutioning or uh, you know implementing uh, and trying to address the complexities of the business scenarios. And that's very, very important. So, um, yes, Engineer Bashir, you rightly mentioned you need to have uh, uh, a proper element to which is causing your problem to be structured and then trying to, you know, gather all the connect and connect the points and then design your, your structure in a way that you know what you're providing as a solution before you jump to the problem solution area, that it this is your problem area, and this is what is causing X, and this is what is what, what is causing Y. So data is there, volume of data is there, complexities will always be there in business scenarios for HR professionals from employee standpoint, but 
yes how do you derive it how do you you know bring up and structure this entire problem uh, uh, practice is very very important so yeah uh, if, if, I, if I can just add on to that, imagine uh, in my father's time, 99% of the employees would join an organization and leave the same organization or retire from the same organization. Attrition was only a rare case. Today, attrition has so many dimensions that you can't imagine of. First, the employees are impatient. It's a money game that is going on in the market. A bargain of 10% can cause an attrition. The only way to stop a person in my father's time was hide the salary and they would be happy to stay back. And not all will ask for a raise because they were compassionate about the companies. Today, that compassion is not there from the, from the employee side as well. So we need to understand that how much money is in stake what are the options available to us and unless and until we do a problem solving we will not exhaustively list down the options available to us so that i invest in options which gives me the highest roi and that is the root cause of the problem that is where the chps of the world will pitch in to to bring in benefit to the organization abhijit now you raised a pertinent point but that was you know, the baby boomers time where cradle to the grave concept was there. Now, we discussed in our last CHPA uh, live wire, game changer live wire, and I was pointing to Adishri that the millennials and then the Gen Z, right? Now, attrition is not the only issue in the employer life cycle. You know, there are various touch points are there. And if I can rightly relate with your course is you have you can or with the course capability you can uh, solve problems at each point of employer life cycle so so we, we, are, in, we are we are talking about right now the attraction right and attraction uh, has direct implication to the attrition you know but there are other dimensions also are there what about uh, the long-term retention, you know, uh, reward versus long-term retention, retentions. Or secondly is employee security, employee well-being, right, which is becoming a more cause of concern, employee happiness, right. Now, there are uh, methodology are there, there are uh, uh, ways are there where you can capture these data and can arrive at a meaningful solution and you can link it to your business strategy, you know, aligning the just strategy with business strategy. So give us some glimpse about, you know, beyond attrition, you know, what all are the areas are there where, uh, you know, CHPA can add value in the entire employee life cycle. Sunil, uh, and we will be doing in the Game Changer series, we will be addressing this through a session on employee life cycle management where we will be seeing that how, what, what is covered in entirety. Uh, uh, and uh, it's, it's a key shift in the strategy. Earlier, the, the objective was to address operational issues through HR. Today, even the management is looking at maximizing employees' contribution to the organization. Uh, Rajeshri, you are muted. So uh, the whole focus is on identifying initiatives across the employee life cycle and see which are the priorities, priority areas where we will initiate campaigns or internal uh, initiatives which will bring maximum return from an employee value contribution point of view. So it may be possible that there is a set of employees where attrition would be a problem and addressing that brings in X amount of value. And there is a set of employees where ma management would be a problem, where investing X amount would bring in 2Y. So if I have 2Y amount of money, I would rather put it in the middle group rather than addressing the attrition, which is only going to bring, bring me so much of return. So there, have, like every strategic field, HR has to look at a single word called ROI. 
and ROI was not a part of the HR scenario even five to ten years back. Today, every HR head is being called in the room and is asked on the ROI on the initiatives that are taken. And we will be addressing this in the in in a, in a another uh, game changer series. The complete what we, we mean by employee life cycle management. Okay, and uh, Abhijit, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, the growing concerns of, you know, post-COVID-19 or during the COVID-19 was that the blue FX, you know, work from home, you know, and uh, employers are greatly concerned about how to make the work from home effective. I think so you have, you'll, you'll take us through that part also, you know, our next talk about how to, you know, see the measure the effectiveness of work from home concept, right? Uh, Sandeep, I, I, as you can understand that I am not teaching anything new to the participants who are coming here. They are more experienced HR people than me. They know their solutions. What I'm trying to do is to help them ask the right questions and ask the uncomfortable questions that we have not asked earlier. If they can ask the uncomfortable question, the solution is there. But because we are not asking the right questions, we were not seeking the solution also. Today, data is everywhere. You cannot imagine the amount of data that we are sitting on. If you ever sit with an IT department, they will tell you that there are thousands of files. Each files have hundreds of fields. So we are talking about a million data fields. Forget about, uh, you know, number of rows of data. I'm not talking about the records. But the number of kind of data that we have we have is enormous. Now, if you tell your IT that send me the data and I will find if something can be found out of that, then none, you're, you're not reaching anywhere. What, what is expected from a CHPA or a strategy guy is to list down the questions that needs to be answered, list down how it is going to be answered, and point out what data do you need including the definition because yesterday attendance was all about register today attendance is also about how many times you have scanned so i may define my attendance as somebody who has signed in before 10 o'clock in the morning and has not exited a uh, the premises more than thrice in the day so that may be your your definition of attendance today so hr it will not understand your definition you will have to tell the IT what your requirements are. Second, uh, the whole CHPA course that if, if we go to the next section, uh, Sandeep, CHPA is not about making data scientists. You have to understand the role of the CHPA. They are department heads or they are senior in the department. They have a team of data scientists. They have a team of business analysts. They have stakeholders which are top management they have stakeholders which are peers in your company. Whenever you are trying to implement a solution, there are hundreds of people involved in the whole process. And when you have such a complex situation, the only way to ensure smoothness is structure. And there is nobody else but the CHPS who will ensure the structure. See, at, uh, with somebody with 15 to 20 years of experience, nobody expects them to get their hands dirty with the Excel sheets or with the data. The only reason we are covering it in the CHP course is because people around them, under them will be doing the same and they will be the one who will be evaluating them. So they should know what is happening. They should know how it is happening. It is not necessary that they should be able to do it. That, that is not the expectation. But a major part is how do you bring in a huge amount of people in a single team create a proper infrastructure and use the infrastructure to get ROI on the investments from the HR is what CHPAs are all about. It might be how do you handle your vendors because the vendors will be very different in nature. When you call in an analytics company, there are data scientists who are coming in. They will assure you they have their done work in HR. Believe me, not many are there who have done work in HR. But that doesn't mean they don't understand. They're, they're sharp people, but you have to set their expectation. You have to set the benchmarks. So when you as a CHP know what are the possibilities, 
you are obviously putting pressure or putting benchmarks which are speed to uh, achieve within your own team and from the vendors that you are dealing with. And that is where we, we are telling that the most important part of the whole course is this part, which is structured problem solving. If they are, if people are doing this, the rest of the things is is a cakewalk. It might seem to be very very hard, but believe me, the simplest things are the most difficult ones to achieve. So now this brings us to the you know the last part of the discussion is about the CHPAs and the role of problem solving. Now let's hear from uh, both uh, attendees who have attended this course, um, and let's hear from the horse's mouth, Engineering Bashir and Rajshree Chatter of CIPD. What has been your experience so far till, uh, on the module two of the CHPA? Indian machine. Well, to be very honest, it's it's a little bit for me, uh, even though I've been working with data for the past, what is it, eight, ten years now, uh, it was challenging for me with the amount of complexity that was laid out. Uh, I was surprised of how uh, detailed the course was into finding those problems and trying to solve it. In the same time, it was challenging for me to put my head and my thoughts and how do I tackle problems into the format that uh, that was demanded by the course. Uh, Abajid was great in helping me along get out of my uh, untrain myself on what I'm used to do and start understanding what is demanded of the course and thereby providing uh, the best solutions to my problems. It was, um, it was a tough but also an easy transition. It was tough to unlearn, but once I unlearned, it was easy for me to understand the concepts, understand what was needed, and uh, it just went through very smoothly, I believe. So far, I don't know, we still didn't take the test. So Abajit, tell me, how bad did I do so far? <laughs> no, no, as, as I told you, Anjir there is there is no test that is that we are looking at. The only test is that how do you go beyond your own, own self. Uh, and the moment you think that, yes, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm putting them on paper, uh, I think the whole data process becomes a lot easier. For, for somebody like Engineer Bashir, who is anyway number savvy, uh, it will be far easier to do that. Uh, but yes, that is the requirement. That is the requirement of the day. We can't say that, you know, I'm not interested, so I will not do it. There's no choice uh, for that. Uh, we are all trying to do the CHPA course because uh, we need to embrace the data-driven decision. making. The e easier way is to just take it head on, enjoy the process. I am not making it very program heavy or extremely data heavy. Uh, I'm just trying to make it interesting. And what I mean by interesting is not just distributing the certificate. I'm just making the process of thinking more uh, interesting or stressful. And if you think that stress is interesting, then uh, you are done. Yeah, the, the most important thing, Abhijit, is to, you know, um, unlearning is it's it's a difficult task you know at the at, at, at the age and experience when you talk about you know more than a decade plus you know and then um uh, bashir he is into thick and thin of analytics you know and if he's being challenged you know at the in the, in the course then that means there is quite a strong positivity going on in the course then it's adding value but let's hear from rajeshree that uh, how Rashi, um, your experience has been so far, and what do you say about the module two? Uh, well, Sandeep, I, I I'll be honest to tell you that there have been instances during my um, uh, program and lectures where I've literally sent a chat to Abhijit saying this is the best course that I've ever attended. This is the best program that I have personally, um, you know, chosen to to do because uh, always while while doing your job as a HR person, you are uh, with experience. You know what what data you're going to look at. You know exactly um, what trend it 
uh, you know, certain functions and circumstances are going to fall out of. And this course has helped me wear altogether new pair of lenses of analytics, where even I am challenged and questioned uh, when Abhijit would question certain things while we are doing some online exercises and tasks. And the way uh, he would make us want or ask questions is so different to the usual uh, me. It's it's completely different as to, you know, seeing seeing it from an analytical eyes, which are very fresh in terms of thinking. And this is exactly what Abhijit mentioned is he is literally molding and making us wear new pair of analytical glasses where, uh, where our thinking uh, process is is uh, is getting transformed and that's needed because we're used to doing it doing or doing all the things in a certain way over and over and over and again but now it's about um, okay you've looked at it in this way can you think of something else and maybe that's where the answer could lie and that's exactly where I'm standing uh, in today's point in time with this program. So I highly, highly recommend. And, um, and Abhijit knows that very well. Just during the program, I would just send him a ping saying, I'm so glad that I'm doing this course. So, yeah. I was, I was thinking, Rajeshri and uh, Ian Bashir, that people will be after Abhijit's blood, you know. He then pushed them. <laughs> oh, he, he has cornered some people. <laughs> Please do not confuse uh, appreciation for the knowledge and hating Abhijit. They do two different things, by the way. Abhijit, now, uh, since we are talking about, uh, you know, um, CHPA, Sandeep, I think you're muted. So Abhijit, uh, we are talking about the CHPA. So, uh, and since we are discussing about CHPA module, so which segment of students, you know, which segment of the uh, people in HR you are targeting uh, for the CHPA, you know, so that, uh, you know, every, every, every uh, live wire, we tell that, you know, which is the target segment of people so that um, otherwise if the person is there in one year experience or, you know, 30 years of experience, which is what kind of a segment of people you are targeting this. And so if you have less than 10 of your years of your career left, I think don't enter the course. You will enjoy, you will pass this 10 years. Anything more than 10 years, it's a considerable amount of time. You cannot uh, stay away or, or, or ignore uh, data driven business from now onwards. So either today you do it or you suffer tomorrow. It's not uh, about suffering, but just adapting. It, it, no, see, even in your daily life, you are trying to learn new things every day. The thing is you have people reporting to you. Thing is that you are getting fresh challenges every moment in, in the business. Now, the way your organization is progressing, you will have to reflect on your own way of doing things. We are not doing the course for the junior people and expecting them to learn data science. I'm trying to impart only one thing through the course. How do you structure your thoughts? How do you structure your problems? How do you structure your solutions? And how do you mobilize your team to arrive at those solutions? It is important that you realize that you are working in an environment where you are dealing with multiple teams within your department and with other departments. Because see, HR, any initiative cannot be implemented on ground without interacting with the other teams in the, in the organization. That is the only department which acts as a hub and spoke model where every department is a client of HR. And HR has to understand that if it is logical, if it is data driven, it is more easy to convince rest of the organization of what they're doing. The uh, more complex your organization becomes, it will be very, very difficult for you to convince the others of what initiatives you're taking and how do you roll it out on the ground. And that is what uh, is all about. 
Abhijit, uh, what will be the your next uh, uh, our live wire topic? Uh, you know, we're going to go for a module three now uh, on the CHP. So we'll be doing two more uh, things. One of the important sessions would be employee lifecycle management because that is the crux of the strategy and planning part of HR. So when I'm talking about employee lifecycle management, how do I look at employees from a point of view that how do I extend the life of the employee within the organization? How do I increase the depth of the contribution from the employees? And how do I identify the best employees to retain? As much as it is a problem to recruit good people, it is also a burden to carry on people who are not no more beneficial to the organization. This fine balance is a continuous process of life. And how do you marry that employee lifecycle management to the organization objectives is what we will be doing. Because that is what HR is all about, isn't it, in today's scenario. So that we will be doing in one of the sessions. The second is on the numbers, the statistics part of it. How, what is the kind of statistics that we are expecting people to learn? That is that is one of the sessions that we will be doing. So uh, I think that would be sufficient. It covers everything within uh, CHPA. Yes, sir. Thank you, Abhijit. Now we we have just reached across the one hour time, and which is our scheduled time for the live wire. Uh, thank you again, Abhijit, for taking us through to this um, very very interesting live wire on structured problem solving, critical but neglected. And uh, you will hear from um, this live wire session, which is going to be the third live wire, uh, the the fourth one, and. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about uh, employee life cycle and then statistics. And then uh, we're going to have one more very interesting live which is going to come up from the Spain chapter, creative creativity as a key skill for success. And this is in relation to remote workplace. So stay tuned uh, from GSHCM. And this is going to be on 26th of November, uh, 5 p.m. Central Europe time. Uh, thank you again, all of you, for participating in today's live wire. Thank you, Abhijit. Thank you, Jirin Bashir. Uh, thank you, Ayushree. And we'll connect again for the live wire next session. Thank you so much. And you have a good evening.